Hello there, Thrill Seekers, and I am still here in Las Vegas, and this is the fourth time I have made this video, and I am with Daisy. Can you see her over there? Hey, Daisy. Daisy, say hi to the folks. Yeah, there she is. That is my nephew's dog, Daisy. Yeah, she's, she seems busy right now, so I'm not going to bother her. Uh, and I uh, wanted to do a little video about Huang Po. Huang Po is a guy I've talked about on this video channel a few times. He's also, Daisy is crawling around here, he's also known as Obaku in Japanese. That's how the Japanese pronounce the Chinese characters that spell out his name. And last night I just happened to be reading D.T. Suzuki's Manual of Zen Buddhism. This is how weird I am. I brought this with me in my backpack for fun reading while I'm uh, traveling around and vacationing in Las Vegas. So, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm hopeless, I suppose. So I just want to read you some of this stuff and then maybe make a little comment on it because I like it and... Uh, well, here goes. This is from Huang Po's sermon from the treatise on the essentials of the transmission of mind, a.k.a. Denshin Hoyo. And I'm going to read you the setup. And here's the setup. And this is kind of Huang Po's most famous piece of writing, is the setup to this piece. Uh, and here it goes. Buddhas and sentient beings both grow out of the one mind, and there is no other reality than this mind. It has been in existence since the beginningless past. It knows neither birth nor death. It is neither blue nor yellow. It has neither shape nor form. It is beyond the category of being and non-being. It is not to be measured by age, old or new. It is neither long nor short. It is neither large nor small. For it transcends all limits, words, traces, and opposites. It must be taken just as it is in itself. When an attempt is made on our part to grasp it in our thoughts, it eludes. It is like space whose boundaries are altogether beyond measurement. No concepts are applicable here. So that's his setup. And he says this one mind is the Buddha and is not separate from sentient beings from beings. Sentient beings is kind of one of these phrases, and I talked about this on a previous video, that is a set phrase in Buddhism. And you don't have to worry about, you know, what is a sentient being as opposed to an insentient being? Because Dogen takes care of that, and he says there's no difference between sentient and insentient beings. In sentient and insentient beings. Sorry, I'm going to pick up a rock. So this rock is also a sentient being for uh, the Buddhists. So I'll put it down gently. And so is Daisy, who's over there sniffing around, and so are you, and so is this computer, and so is everything. This mind is no other than Buddha. There is no Buddha outside of mind, and nor is there any mind outside of Buddha, uh, and so on and so forth. And I'm just going to skip right to the end, because the end was the part that kind of blew my mind the other day when I was looking at it, and here it goes. It is told again by the Tathagata, Tathagata is the Buddha, that this Dharma is perfectly even and free from irregularities. So it's absolutely the same wherever you go. By Dharma is meant Bodhi, and Bodhi is means enlightenment. So by Dharma is meant enlightenment. That is, this pure mind forming the source of all things is perfectly even in all sentient beings. So this mind is the same mind in me, and it's the same mind in Daisy, who's sniffing over there, and it's the same mind in my wife, who's upstairs uh, cleaning up my uh, nephew's apartment, and uh, which she shouldn't be doing, but she does this, and I try to stop her in any way, I tell him it's his responsibility, but she wants to do it anyway. So anyway, that's what she's doing, and maybe I should be up there helping her instead of making this video. Anyway, whatever. I, I got, you, I got you, you people uh, rely on me for this. Anyway, it's the same mind wherever you go. So your mind is the same mind as my mind. That's the stance, and I just saw some birds flying. Same mind in them, same mind in the tree over there, same mind in that rock I just picked up, and everything else. Same mind even, uh, perfectly even in all sentient beings, in all the Buddha lands, and also in all the other worlds where the aliens live, uh, together with mountains, oceans, etc., so the alien mountains and oceans too, uh, things with form and things without form. They are all even, and there are no marks of distinction between this object and that. This pure mind, the source of all things, is always perfect and illuminating and all-pervading. People are ignorant of this and take what they see or hear or think of or know for mind itself. So that's not mind. And their insight is then veiled and unable to penetrate into the substance itself, which is clear and illuminating. 
When you realize mushin, and mushin means no mind, without anything intervening, uh, that is intuitively, the substance itself is revealed to you. It is like the sun revealing itself in the sky, which it is doing because it's always clear skies around. Well, it's not always clear skies here in Vegas. That's, uh, the last couple of days have been kind of cloudy and overcast, but uh, now it's returned back to clear skies. Uh, it is like the sun revealing itself in the sky. Its illumination penetrates the ten quarters, and there is nothing that will interfere with its passage. For this reason, when followers of Zen, that's you guys and me, fail to go beyond a world of their senses and thoughts, all their doings and movements are of no significance. Oh no! So what is he going to say to follow that up? He says, but when the senses and thoughts are annihilated, all the passages to the mind are blocked, and no entrance then becomes possible. So what are we going to do? Okay, here's, here's how he follows that up. The original mind is to be recognized along with the working of the senses and thoughts, only it does not belong to them, nor is it independent of them. So neither category fits. Do not build up your views on your senses and thoughts. Do not carry on your understanding based on the senses and thoughts. But, at the same time, do not seek the mind away from your senses and thoughts. Do not grasp the Dharma by rejecting your senses and thoughts. So that's kind of a, 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 a little diss, maybe. Diss is probably too strong of a word. But it's kind of uh, going against this, this idea that people often have of meditation, which is you're trying to block all your senses and thoughts. The, um, God, it was a few years ago, God, almost 15 or more years ago, I was in Montreal in Canada, and I uh, did an, a sensory deprivation tank experiment. And I used to be kind of fascinated by this idea. Uh, I came across the works of John Lilly, who was a scientist who wrote a lot about sensory deprivation and the sort of spiritual insights to be had from that. And, uh, and so this is supposed to block out all your senses so that you can come... Uh, aware of pure mind. Well, the Zen way is not that way. It is not blocking off your senses to become aware of pure mind. It is seeing your seeing mind through the senses. Uh, and here we go. Uh, he says, Huang Po says, when you are neither attract, sorry, when you are neither attached nor detached from them, when you are neither abiding with nor clinging to them, that's your thoughts and your senses. So your thoughts on the one side and your sensory perception, which is the material world, basically, on the other side. When you're neither abiding with nor clinging to them, then you enjoy your perfect, unobstructed freedom. Then you have your seat of enlightenment. And he says a lot more than that, but I think I'm going to stop here because in the previous version of this video, I read the whole thing, and then when I look back on it, it was boring as uh, boring AF, as the kids say. But that is Huang Po. And I think he's a real interesting character, and I'm considering what to do about how interesting I think Huang Po is, because it's been about a year, two years, three years that I've been this on this Huang Po kick, and there's not a lot of material written by him. You can kind of read everything about Huang Po in a day or two if you really are diligent about it. So it's not like Dogen where there's volumes of, of stuff. There's just this sort of a, a couple of sets of material that are attributed to him and then a handful of koan stories about him. But Dogen praises him to the skies as the, one of the greatest Zen masters, and so he's a big influence on Dogen. He lived, well, he died in the year 850 in the common era, or Christian era, whatever we're calling it these days. So that's where he is, and he was the student of Hyakujo, of Hyakujo's fox fame. And if you don't know what Hyakujo's fox is, go look up a video on this channel called The Famous Fox Koan, and that tells you what Hyakujo's fox is. And I've talked about it a lot uh, in my books. I talked about it in Sit down and shut up. I talked about it in Don't Be a Jerk. No, no, sorry, did not in Don't Be a Jerk, but in It Came From Beyond Zen. So I've written about uh, Hyakujo's Fox, and that's he's this teacher of Huang Po, and then Huang Po's student was Rinzai, who founded the Rinzai sect. Actually, Rinzai, I don't think, founded the Rinzai sect. It was founded much later, but uh, but they stuck his name on it. Uh, so so he's a real famous guy and really uh, central to the, to the teaching and the transmission of uh, Zen Buddhism as it is. And he's a real interesting guy, and what was I saying? Oh, that I'm thinking about either doing a big, long podcast series about Huang Po's and material, or maybe even making a book out of it, or maybe doing the podcast first and doing the book later. But anyway, he's, he's an interesting guy, and I think it's interesting that we've been able to come across him. And I think we should be consider ourselves fortunate, we meaning you and me, 
uh, that we were able to come across this material and that we have even a glimmer of understanding of it because not many people do and I don't think we should brag on ourselves and think we're great for that but I think it is it is something interesting uh, so uh, so consider yourself uh, lucky to have come across it not, not that you're lucky to have come across me I don't know if you are or not but I think uh, this is a rare and unusual thing and I think it's it's special and, and we shouldn't pass it by so there you go that's sort of a little introductory thing and I've done I, I've talked about this stuff numerous times and I'll talk about it numerous times again because I think it's so interesting I think he is one of the deepest and most profound of all the thinkers in this lineage, uh, maybe even beyond Buddha himself. I don't know. It's dangerous to say that. Anyway, that's what I wanted to say about Wang Po. So I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, if you want to support me, you can go to the URL you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are the way I make a living, and so I really appreciate your support. But as always, this is offered to you for free, so you don't got to pay if you don't want to pay. So we will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Bye. And say bye, Daisy. Say bye to everybody. Or sniff the air. All right. Bye.